My apologies for being late, but uh, we're going to start. Can we get going? Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I've been reading this thing. I'd like to call to order the Cap uh, Capitol of City Council meeting, and let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you everyone for being here. We're a little bit late because of discussion in closed session. Um, like to get an update. This is a presentation from the Soquel Unified School Elementary District regarding bond funding projects. No, that's a very old. Oh, I didn't think that was on the agenda, but you gave it to me. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go to what I have. The rest is correct, okay. Basically, we have um, a presentation from Red Cross and a certificate. We have some from Red Cross, okay. I'm gonna read this to you because um, I can't stand up and read it myself. <laughs> so this is um, a proclamation designating March 2019 as the American Red Cross Month. So the presentation reads, whereas the American Red Cross is one of the largest humanitarian organizations in the world and every day delivers its mission to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies. And whereas every year the Red Cross responds to an average of more than 62,000 disasters across this country from small home fires to devastating mass, uh, massive disasters. Last year alone, large crises included mudslides in California, a volcano in Hawaii, wildfires in Colorado and California, destructive hurricanes in Florida and the Carolines, and devastating typhoon in U.S. territories. And whereas the Central Coast chapter here in Capitola and Santa Cruz assisted with 66 local disasters alone in the past year alone and helped save lives through its home fire campaign. Since the campaign launched in October 2014, the Central Coast chapter has worked with community partners to install 1,795 smoke alarms and make 582 household safer. And whereas in our year, in, in our area last year, the Red Cross handled 141 emergency military calls and collected 6357 units of blood from our generous blood donors. And whereas the citizens of Capitol are among those volunteering and donating to assist their neighbors when they need a helping hand. And whereas the Red Cross shelters, feeds, and provides emotional support to victims of disasters, supplies about 40% of the nation's blood supply, teaches skills that save lives and provides international humanitarian aid and supports military members and their families. And whereas each year we dedicate the month of March to recognize and thank the Red Cross volunteers and donors who give of their time and resources to help members of the community. The Red Cross depends on these local heroes to deliver help and hope. So now I thereby resolve that um, as a mayor of Capitola, I proclaim March 2019 as American Red Cross Month. Thank you, Your Honor. No. Uh, mayor and members of the City Council, we want to thank the City of Capitola for honoring the Red Cross during Red Cross Month and thank the citizens of Capitola for their generous contributions of blood and life saving services to our community. We're grateful and appreciative of your recognition and we hope that we can continue to serve our community and be good stewards for each and every one of the citizens in Capitola. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have, Dr. Smith? where is the thing? 
Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm sorry. I did try to find a red shirt for the occasion. Yeah, okay. <sighs> so, we now have a historic museum update. And Frank? Oh, no, not Frank in this case. Yes, Deb. Not up front. No. Yes. But here. Well, good evening to you all, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council. My name is Dave Payton, uh, a member of the, the Board of Trustees. Let me first, before I begin, introduce our President, Niels Kiesling, is here tonight. Our Secretary, Pam Greninger, is here. And our youth representative, Joshua Henshaw, is here as well. Hey, Josh. And, of course, last but not least in this case is Frank. Frank will be helping me. Frank Berry will be helping with the slides tonight. So. Anyway, uh, on behalf of the uh, Museum Board of Trustees, thank you for this opportunity to present this update on the Capitola Historical Museum and the exciting progress that has been made over the past few years. The museum's exhibition for 2019 is titled Capitola Obscura, Little Known Facts About Capitola History. Did you know that a locomotive that once pulled trains through Capitola is now on permanent display at the Smithsonian? Or that this area was once planted in sugar beets to supply a sugar factory that was located where uh, Knob Hill Foods is today. Well, curator Frank Perry spent two months researching, designing, and installing displays on these and 18 other topics. The opening reception will be this Saturday, March 16th, noon to two, and refreshments will be served. We hope all of you here tonight and those watching on TV uh, back home will be able to attend. Last year's exhibition, Frequently Asked Questions About Capitola, was one of the best attended in the past dozen years. 8,452 people came through the museum, not including the thousands more who enjoyed the outdoor display of the historic 1907 cottage. While many visitors were locals, the majority were from out of town, a few from as far away as the eastern United States, Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Last year's volunteer recruitment doubled the number of volunteers to 80, and I think we have a volunteer here tonight. We have a couple of volunteers here tonight. Uh, in 2018, these people generously donated a combined total of 726 hours to staff the front desk during open hours. Each volunteer is essentially an ambassador for Capitola, providing information not only about the town's history, but also about points of interest in the village, frequently giving out maps and guides. Historic photographs from the museum's collection are now on display at local businesses, such as Capitola Self Storage, Eric's Deli, Village House Pizza, and the Capitola Hotel. We are especially looking forward to also having displays at the new library. The museum's focal point feature in the Santa Cruz Sentinel each Sunday also showcases the museum's photographs as well as those of others. The museum continues to add video oral histories to its YouTube channel, and as of last Saturday, these had nearly 2,000 views. The satellite exhibits, the focal point, and the videos take the museum far beyond the building's walls and encourage more people to visit Capitola and the museum. Last year, a museum curator, Frank Perry, responded to over 100 requests for information. Often, people wanted to know about the history of their houses and if the museum, most importantly, had a historic picture of it, and I can vouch for that. We get asked that all the time. Others were re researching family history or wanted to know more about uh, resources for history in this area. Last year, the museum released two new publications, a companion to Capitola and the Capitola History Coloring Book. There are now four general history books on Capitola currently in print, each with a different approach to the topic. Later this year, a bilingual version of the coloring book will also be available. The museum's collection is sort of like an iceberg. Only a small part of it is seen at any one time due to limited space. That is why we change exhibitions each year. Cycling artifacts and photographs through the exhibitions enables us to display much more than would otherwise be possible. Over the past few years, 
great progress has been made in curating collections that are in storage. Proper archival boxes have been purchased for storing the rarer items. Artifacts have been organized by subject and inventories have been made of each of the boxes. Besides the Capitola Obscura reception this Saturday at noon, we have two other important events coming up. On Tuesday, March 19th, the museum will be holding a fundraiser at Shadowbrook Restaurant. If you dine at the restaurant that evening and tell them that you are dining for the Capitola Museum, they will donate 30% to the museum. This is a fun and easy way to help the museum and enjoy a great dinner too. And last but not least, on Saturday, May 19th, the museum will be hosting the Santa Cruz County History Fair at the Capitola Community Center in Jade Street Park. 25 museums, historical societies, and history-related groups from around the county will have displays of photographs and artifacts celebrating our region's past. Anyone interested in local history won't want to miss this fun and educational event. And that concludes our presentation. Thank, Thank you. you, that's great. Frank, are you gonna wanna say a few words? Uh, I think he said it all. I think he did too. <laughs> well. Frank wrote this, so he's really <laughs> <upset at> <laughs> he <all>. did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to add that uh, when the History Museum and the uh, group gets together for a party, it's been quite fun. So I think some of these events will be also in the same vein. So any other questions of, um, no, Sam? If I, if you just make, I want to say thank you. Uh, you know, Frank, Dave, Nils, Josh, Pam, uh, and all the volunteers that uh, really keep Capitola history alive. Um, and I think it's so important uh, what you do uh, in that regard. Um, and I would encourage uh, all the residents to uh, come to the opening uh, uh, this Saturday at 12 o'clock. Um, and if you can't make it there, be sure to stop in and see the exhibits. It, it is just wonderful. So I just wanted to personally express my gratitude and thank you for all the work that you do. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so I, I have a project for you, Frank, later, but I can't talk about it now because it's not scheduled. So um, we've received the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. So let's get a report on closed session. The uh, council met per the special or er, closed session agenda, but no reportable action was taken this evening. Okay. Any additional materials? There were none received for this agenda. Okay. So I'd like to say at this point that um, Tristan Rivera is going to be our technician tonight, and the meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications uh, cap, uh, Cable TV Channel 8, and it's also being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. on Saturday, the following the first rebroadcast also at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. It's also available on our website. So with that, uh, no additional, uh, this is a time for public comments. Anyone in the audience would like to make a public comment, please come to the lectern. Mayor, Councilman, uh, Gary Richard Arnold. Uh, the person following me's name is uh, Victorious Alexander and um, he created a crime by participating in a, a government forum. Uh, he brought one of the props he bought from uh, a Target department store to make his point, and they used restraining orders in order to keep him away uh, from that uh, judicial jurisdiction. Uh, the censorship is a uh, legend, especially in Santa Cruz County. We've had both uh, John Leopold and Zach Friend uh, threaten the Grange, they threatened lives, and they threatened property enough to have them shut down uh, uh, two different speakers. Um, we've got a, a problem with community TV that shut off uh, uh, the public's uh, presentation uh, last month within uh, 18 days, both in San Benito County and in Santa Cruz County. Uh, the chairman of the board of Community TV, his name is Maitra, Maitreya, I'm sorry. And that's a, a, it's a favorite cult name and it's very anti-Christian. Um, it says on his uh, personal biography, his closest friend is Eric Schmidt. And of course, Eric Schmidt, we know, is uh, compared to uh, Beria, the NKVD, because of his censorship he's been doing uh, throughout the country. Um, 
uh, they also use the Southern Poverty Law Center as to who is telling fake news and who isn't. The founder of the Southern Poverty Law Center was Julian Bond. Um, he, together with James Weinstein, James Weinstein used to drive around Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, atomic spies that were finally executed. Uh, but he ran an organization called In These Times out of Chicago. Uh, the direct son of In These Times is Good Times, and all, right out of uh, Santa Cruz. And in San Luis Obispo, it's in other times. Uh, but these are decidedly uh, deliberate in order to control uh, the community. And the anti-Christian stance also, you can see with Angela Davis, uh, the person that uh, she ran with, uh, which was Gus Hall, he said, I dream of the hour when the last congressman is strangled to death on the guts of the last preacher. And since Christ, uh, Christians seem to love singing about the blood, why not give them some? And of course, she provided uh, the, uh, the weapons in order to blow a judge's head out and kill a couple of policemen. We have Leon Panetta's uh, campaign manager, Don Lane, giving Angela Davis a key to the city of Santa Cruz only in 2015. Uh, this marriage between the Trilateral Commission and the Communists uh, continues. Uh, the book, uh, California Dynasty of Communism, written by uh, FBI agents, said Alan Cranston was one of the members uh, that was uh, being part of the subversion. Uh, M Kamala Harris was an intern for Alan Cranston. Diane Feinstein's uh, Russell Lowe is a communist Chinese spy that spoke at the UCSC within the last couple of weeks. Thank you very much. Any other members of the audience that would like to speak? Yeah, before I begin uh, my public comment, I, I want to be able to share with members of the public what it is to be a good flag waving Americans because we are good people. I truly believe that. And I want to be able to affirm our democratic values. You know, I'm in the political arena, and not, not, not just for the giggles, but I'm there at a necessity. You know, every political system, right, when you're, when you're, when you're speaking political dissent are cracking down on people's freedom of speech. At the County Board of Supervisors, they change their policy right, with the consent agenda. So I want, I'm here to inform Capitola residents and District 2 uh, members of, of the anti-dialogical action that's going, going on at the county level, which I, I find it very uh, disrespectful because members of the public should be able to weigh in on the political issue and offer the public spirited perspective. This is not for the wealthy, the powerful, the influential. This is a community of equals where I should be able to, as a person of color, right, be proud to be an American and to be able to come in here and to exercise these, these democratic values. Now, Zach Friend runs his district and he wants to take the American public like we're just toys, right? Undermining these, these uh, the Brown Act, undermining our political dissent, our right to criticize our government. Hey, I'm enjoying myself. I'm not letting political power go to my head. I'm a character and I'm always gonna be a character. I don't know my place and it's okay. This is lawful activity. And so I want to be able to galvanize uh, uh, a district two, right? Let them know that all institutions are to be tested by the degree to which they guarantee liberty, right? Uh, whoever, who, who would ever overthrow liberty of a city, county, or nation must begin by subduing freedom of speech, right? The, the agreements that you guys have with the human society is an agreement, <coughs> right? And without the consent of the people, you have no political power, right? So Zach Friend and, and the county board are undermining this democratic value by marginalizing and criminalizing political dissent, which is shameful. They're using all tools whatsoever. I just like to be polemical for the sake of exercising that right. I don't wanna be going with uh, embracing the tyranny of the majority. I come here with good intentions, to offer the public spirited perspective of how people of color are experiencing this political system in Santa Cruz County. And I have every right to shame my politicians, to use the unforced force of the Speech Act, and to challenge Zach Friend, District 2 County Board of Supervisors, to come at it right and to be better for all and allow us to all participate, right? You know, these democratic values are important during these trying times. And there's a lot of uh, people that are following my activism, right? I have a right to come into the political arena 
to offer my uh, political criticism, the public square in the cyber world. Thank you. Thank you. Any others in the uh, audience that would like to speak? Seeing none, bring it back to city council for staff comments and city council members. I move. None? You bet? I do, yeah. Okay. <coughs> so I had um, the wonderful opportunity to meet with the Santa Cruz County Public Health Educators recently. And um, after talking with them about the, the uptick in uh, the use of vaping by our middle schoolers and our high schoolers. I was presented with some really, um, really scary numbers and facts. And so I would be interested in having staff um, explore uh, the policy regulating the sales to, mi to minors and possibly looking at um, banning the flavored tobacco pods. Um, so if we can look at policies, I know some other cities have adopted similar policies and we're one of a couple who have not. So I'd be interested in looking at that um, if we were in agreement on council with that. Everyone has an option to put something on the agenda. Okay, um, and then may I add one more? Sure. And then um, I'd also like to look at uh, or like to request that Capitola City Council's compensation um, be reviewed possibly by the finance committee and staff if um, and uh, you know not at next meeting but in the future um, if that was a possibility as well okay. help time yeah. okay <laughs> Kristen yeah I just want to say quickly um, on Saturday March 23rd the Community Action Board is having an event uh, to benefit the Day Worker Center of Santa Cruz County it's Saturday March 23rd from 6 to 8 30 at the Peace United Church on High Street in Santa Cruz uh, tickets are $35 each and they're available to purchase either at the Day Worker Center or online and uh, it's a wonderful organization and a wonderful fundraiser and I hope uh, everyone will have the opportunity to attend Thank you. Sam no comment Okay, um, I have a few. Um, this uh, Friday I'm going to go to a human traffic um, uh, uh, workshop all day at um, Twin Lakes. It starts at 8.30 and I think it's already uh, maxed out as far as attendance. Um, also, uh, my daughter's invited me at this, as a dad, I'm very happy to go on a uh, hike to the Lost Coast. And so I've asked the uh, city uh, vice chair to uh, cover for me, and she will do that in June the 29th. So I'd just like to announce that. And thank you very much, Kristen. And then also, um, I recently read, and I don't know if this is possible for the city capital, so I'm addressing this to our city attorney. Um, some cases, I've been reading the newspaper that uh, certain jurisdictions have actually called for the taking off of the records of those who've been arrested and indicted for marijuana use. And I don't know if we have any say in that, but I'm pretty sure that our, our police have actually arrested those for possession over the years. And uh, with the way marijuana use and our legalization in California, and perhaps in across the country, is going, a lot of uh, communities have, have said that this is a blemish on the record of people and at this point, society is not looking the same way about that. So I kind of like to get some input on that at a future date, uh, not right now, obviously. And uh, those are my comments. So, staff, any comments? Oh, great. I, I, as Steve's coming up, I just wanted to note that we have a slightly irregular format this evening. We're going to have a regular agenda and we're going to move through it. And at 8.30, wherever we are in the agenda, we'll be pausing for a moment to consider a special uh, agenda item uh, about the trees on this property. And then we'll continue and wrap up this agenda. So just so everybody's prepared for that format this evening. Thank you. That will be at 8.30. Steve. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have two quick project uh, Items I'd like to talk about. One is the jewel box traffic calming. I'm sure you all got an email from me earlier today. That project is initiated. As of today, we took the pre counts, and then starting next week, we will be installing the speed tables on Jade Street and 42nd Avenue, and then we should have the signage up uh, the following week. So that project is moving forward quite rapidly and should be completed in the next couple of weeks. Second is on Tuesday, March 26th at 6 p.m., we will be holding a community meeting at the Fairfield Inn and Suites. 
concerning the Bromer Street Improvement Project. This is an improvement project on Bromer that goes from 41st to just past 38th Avenue that will include the uh, construction of new sidewalk on the north side of 38th Avenue, repaving and striping bike lanes um, in both directions. So that again, that meeting is on March 26th, 6 p.m. at Fairfield Inn and Suites right there at the corner, corner of Bromer and 41st and it'll be in meeting room A. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Steve? Oh, we have a question, Steve. Sorry. Um, just real quick, any um, future public hearing meetings, can we be emailed about those? Sure. Okay. We mailed a notice out today to all the residents. I'll be happy to send that notice out Great. tomorrow to you. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. M maybe to all the city council members. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Appreciate Thank that. you very much. Uh, Linda? No comments. No comments. Okay. Moving along to considering the general plan use element and land use map update. We have a board, board, ap um, board appointment. appointment. I'm just going by this darn thing. Mr. Mayor, before we move forward on item 8A, I need to go ahead and recuse myself from the conversation and vote on this matter because I have a personal relationship with the applicant. So I'm going to step out and um, if someone could let me know when this is complete and I will return. Okay. I, I think this is, I'm just going by that. It's out of order. Something's wrong here. Okay. Um, Boards and commissions, thank you for recusing yourself. This is to uh, appoint someone to the Hazardous Material Advisory Commission. Uh, we have an, uh, an yes. update. Yes. This is for a four-year term. The city of Capitola um, holds a seat on the Hazardous Materials Advisory Commission. Um, and as the mayor is well aware, as he has been our representative for the last four years, that term ends in April. And we have an application from, um, I'm happy to say, a very qualified applicant, um, Nick Brown, who is here this evening. Um, he has a degree in emergency planning. He has served as a city intern. Um, he is working on his career in public safety. Um, and he has um, applied for this position to represent the city for the next four-year term. Um, and this is an appointment made by the um, council as a whole, so um, I would ask for a vote on this item. Okay. Um, any comments before from the applicant? No? No, okay. I think we all know you anyway. Okay. So is there a motion? I'll, I'll move to approve Nick Brown. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Nick, for applying. Welcome, and I think we should also thank Linda for thinking of Nick uh, when that came up. I really appreciate that. Okay. Moving on now to general government public hearings. We have the Art and Cultural Commission annual report. Our consent. Can we get um, Councilmember Peterson back? <laughs> she's back. She's back. Oh, she's so quick. She knows. <laughs> Snap your fingers. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, before we dive into that one, should we take the consent item first? Uh, I got, this was all out of order. Okay, yes, we have to uh, look at the uh, city minutes from last time. Um, there's a consent item for city minutes. Um, anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this? Hearing none. Motion to motion? approve consent calendar. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we've done consent. Okay. Now we're on to item 10, general government hearings, art and cultural commission. Good evening, Mayor Bertrand, um, council members. Um, I am here as the staff representative for the art and cultural commission to give the annual report, but I would also love to have uh, give uh, council member story the opportunity cause to speak as well because he has been the, he's currently the council representative but has been the planning commission representative. So if there's any point in the presentation, council member story you'd like to speak up, please let me know. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> so just so you know, for this, but the art and cultural purpose is to advise the city council basically on the use of public funds to support and en encouragement of the ex improved new programs of the arts. Um, we'll start out with the highlights of what was ha happened last year. Um, one of the, the, the ongoing things we do is the concerts. Um, they, the last few years we've increased it to 13 and uh, it, more and more people attend. I mean, if, if, if we could fit more people in there, I think there would be more people. Um, the, uh, the selection committee is a subcommittee of the Art and Cultural Commission. They, they meet and listen to this year. It was about 40 different applicants for this 
and an, another dozen or so for the, uh, the other concerts. And they, they do a very good job of finding not only favorites, but finding new, ba new bands, trying to get um, more interest in, in the concerts. And I think they've been very successful. Um, the bands are paid for by local sponsors. Um, the vast majority of them are Capitola. Um, a lot of them are in the village, but they see the benefit of having a thousand people on a Wednesday night in the village. And so they've been very, very helpful in keeping this program going. The city then pays for the sound engineers to, to, to make it happen. Um, and I think it's a great partnership. Um, everyone seems to be very happy with the concerts and um, we should be announcing very soon the list for 2019. Um, here's a couple images of last year. We did it. We created a, a thank you poster to all for or a banner that we've had at all the events to uh, thank all of the sponsors because obviously without them we we couldn't do this. Um, another event and it's a it's a little less attended, but it's it's uh, six Sundays during the summer. It's a music and art um, exhibition down at um, the Esplanade, um, selling arts and crafts, personal, um, very small. Um, uh, craftspeople come out and sell along the beach, and as part of it, they have a uh, a band. And usually, that band's a little less um, energetic than the Twilight concerts. But it it's it's amazing around here. Uh, if there's music being played, people are dancing. And so Sunday afternoons, usually, I think I think the bands are from one to three. You'll see people dancing right out there. It do, it doesn't matter, um, you know, what the music is. So um, one change this year. Um, in the past, the Art and Cultural Commission had put on three movies, and the Begonia Festival put on the fourth around Labor Day. Uh, last year, with the Begonia Festival no longer uh, being in existence, uh, the Art and Cultural Commission took over that movie as well. And the Movie Selection Committee um, uh, picked another great set of movies. You know, this is a, this is a very different crowd than the Twilight concerts. It is very much a children's, par parents and children's crowd. So what we've learned over the past few years, and I'm sure uh, Council Member can stor story can talk about this, is that if we f the focusing the movies on the small kids gets a huge turnout. Um, it, we just when we get a movie last year, um, Sing, I believe. I mean, it it was incredibly crowded for a you know a, a Friday evening. Um, and another thing is that the um, the Capitola uh, movie theater, the Cinelux, provides popcorn. So that's a, a huge draw as well. So. Um, it's, it's a great time and again, a very different crowd and you know, it's, it's still bringing people down to the beach um, in the Capitola Village. Capitola Plain Air. This is a, a relatively new event. I, I hope everyone's had a chance to uh, either see the folks um, painting or coming to the, 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 the final um, uh, sale and juried event, um, but it's getting more and more popular every year. Um, first year, it was a struggle to, to, to get people to come out. The, 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 the sale didn't generate anything. This year, I believe, I, I, I should have the full, but it was over $15,000 in paintings sold. In addition to that, it w the number of paintings that were sold was, was fantastic. I was there helping out that morning, and there was a line at 11 a.m. when we were waiting to open the, the place. I, I, was, I was stunned. I mean, there was 20 people waiting to get in at 11 a.m. So it's obviously, um, you know, known in the area and known in the painting community. So um, uh, it's very proud of what the, the commission has done with this because it, it started from nowhere and it's, it's definitely every year has gotten bigger. Um, and I don't know if you that we do ha normally have the winners, but we are currently displaying them at the uh, rec center right now to get more people um, an opportunity to see and, you know, hopefully get more participants in it moving forward. Uh, opera at the Beach is a, a, a unique event. It actually is a, it's a professional opera company and a professional orchestra that plays out at our, our beach. The full uh, 25 people, I believe, in the orchestra plus a full dressed um, uh, opera. And you, it's right in the middle of the, you get kids walking back and forth, sitting, watching for 10 minutes. You know, especially the kids amazed at the costume changes and everything, and it's uh, and it's another it's another event that every year, you know, we're not we we don't track ticket sales because every one of these events is free. So, uh, but I do know because I've been at every one, the number of people out there every year has increased. 
um, there's been buses that have come down for the event <laughs> from, from the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we said there's, pr I, I'm not gonna say there isn't anywhere else, because there, there may be, but as far as I know, there's nowhere else you can see an opera looking at the ocean in California. So, um, very unique and it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful event. And it, it leans more toward the art piece. Um, you know, it is a, it is a, um, it's, it's a way to get a different type of art out to, to the community that we normally wouldn't see. Um, and as you know, we do rotate the artwork in the City Hall. Um, uh, Roy Segura over at New Brighton um, continues to bring his students' artwork in into the back, and you know, it always gets a great response. So um, I need to find out when the next group of works is there so we can uh, acknowledge it. But he, he tends to show up and put them up, and um, very little work on our side now. <laughs> it used to be a much more difficult process getting artwork in here, but he, he takes care of it all. As you can see, we do have uh, the most recent group, and I, I, he usually changes it two or three times a, a school year. And three big art projects this year. Um, it was, uh, it had been a couple years since we were able to get anything done. I think at last year's we were talking about um, the council had approved it and things were in, pr in process. Um, the first one was the railing of along Capitol Avenue. Um, it was, this is a, it's a great project because it, it accomplished two things. We were able to get a, first of all, a beautiful railing. Um, you know, something in comparison, we, we had a, just a galvanized steel guardrail. We were able to extend it out to help meet ADA compliance along that ramp. So it, it serves two functions and I think it's fantastic. I think it's a one, I, I was reading a, a, a post by someone with our, our social media is that if you go out there when the sun is in the right way, you see that reflection on the sidewalk. And they wanted to get together someone out there to color it in, like go out there with chalk and color the, the reflection of, of that mm. in. I'm like, that'd be something really interesting to see because it, it's, such a, it's such a fantastic mm. reflection. So I, I hope everyone's using it and enjoying it. The sea lions, um, you know, I'm sure if you've been down there, you can see um, there's always someone there um, people, kids are touching it. Um, you can, you, it's hard to tell, but you can see they're getting use. The noses and everything are, are, are becoming a little shinier. I've sent it, I've sent pictures to the artist and she said that's exactly what was going to happen. You can tell kids are climbing on that all the time. So I think it's a very successful, we're still, I, it's, it, hopefully in the next month or so we'll get a, an ID, you know, um, naming it. Um, we, we just were having trouble figuring out how to get that in, but I think we found somebody to put it in there so that way we can um, put the name and, the, and give credit to the artist. Um, I don't know if anyone skateboards, but at the at McGregor Park, um, uh, Taylor Reinhold and Jimbo Phillips have almost completely finished the, the, uh, the sculpture. Unfortunately, the artist had some injury issues I think skateboarding, um, so he postponed it. Um, is I, 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 I think it's right that they are gonna be out at the, the, the skateboard event, correct? They're gonna be at the, the skateboard event for a dedication, um, we'll get that out. So they, they've got a couple touch-ups to do, but I, I will say one thing, you go out there, it hasn't been touched. There is no, it is, and it's, it's, it's absolutely, if you look at it from the highway, it's, fan, it's fantastic, it, it really has added a lot, and it's, it is uh, what the commission wanted with this is something that not only was beautiful, but it included skateboard culture. And I think it's met it 100%. Um, you know, having these two names on it really, I mean, I think it, you know, the credibility was there right away. So, and it, it's, a, it's really wonderful. Um, some of the, the plans for next year, obviously we're gonna continue with the uh, concerts and the movies. Um, a lot of that work is done by um, our art and cultural representative uh, or staff person, um, Kelly Barreto, and she's already working on it. Um, but she does wanna know, if, you know, if, if, you, if anyone knows sponsors, she's willing to talk to them. Um, you know, a lot of, there's always a lot of interest, um, but that's where she's working now. The letters will go, uh, go out to those who haven't already committed, because a, a lot of sponsors want their date, their band, and you know everything. So tho those folks that have been ongoing sponsors continue will get first dibs. But every year there are new sponsors, so it's it's great. Um, looking at more, the, the commission's looking at more opportunities for art events, um, such as plein air and opera. Um, not sure what exactly they are, but I do know they're 
they're they're looking at things possibly use the new Brighton gym for possibly larger you know music type events um, that'll be something they're looking at um, always a big thing and especially this year we're looking at some new opportunities for public art which include the public art commemorating the begonia festival I don't know if, if you remember the the begonia Fe festival has offered to um, go 50% on a on a, a sculpture or art re remembering it so um, a subcommittee is working on that trying to find determine the type of art and the location at this point and the other very exciting thing for the Commission is that they they're looking forward to working um, with the new library on a public art project so that that's also on there so th that is the end of my report if you have any questions at this time And I see someone. Uh, oh, you, you have a yeah, question. I just wanted to ask. Okay, you have a question. Okay. Oh, not a question. Maybe we, I mean go with questions from other council members. But there are just a few things I wanted to add. Okay. Into the report. Did please. You want me to go ahead yeah, and do that please. now? Yeah, and then I uh, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Larry, um, for that presentation and um, informing the community about what the Arts Commission does. I'd say it's one of the most fulfilling, uh, aside from this position, of course, but uh. one of the most fulfilling and fun things that I do is participating on the Arts Commission. Um, I wanted to clarify uh, for the library project this year, the particular project um, that's going to be coming forth is to propose a trellis over one of the decks and that the Arts Commission is going to be involved um, in uh, the uh, design uh, and the implementation of that particular project. Um, but I, I principally um, wanted to acknowledge the community volunteers that participate in the Arts Commission. Um, you know, we just, uh, when Mike Termini uh, left the council, he left the commission um, and, and he had been, uh, um, uh, played a very important role on the Arts Commission. And I just want to acknowledge and thank um, his uh, contributions uh, to the arts in our community. Um, as well, we lost two other commissioners, Rick Gross recently uh, and Mary Jo Connolly. Um, and so I wanted to extend uh, our gratitude uh, to them for their involvement over the last couple of years. And I want to thank the current uh, arts commissioners. Uh, we have a new president. His name is Roy Johnson, uh, who is an artist. Um, uh, we have Susan Peake, Lori Hill, uh, Mary Beth uh, Kalin. Uh, James Wallace and Courtney Christensen. Um, and I do want to kind of put out a pitch. We have two seats open. Uh, we have an artist seat and an at-large seat. Um, and so if there's anyone in the community, if you really uh, want to uh, be involved in uh, selecting ideas uh, for the Arts Commission uh, and participating in that process, you know, we go from, you know, the concept and looking at the design to making the call for artists jurying uh, the submissions uh, and actually then um, even following it through to completion. Um, and there's a lot of, I, I think, satisfaction in seeing uh, the um, art that we have uh, in the community. Uh, sometimes a lot of controversy because they're always very visible and we all have our own opinions about, you know, what's good art and what's not good art. But I consider that part of the, I think, vibrancy of participating um, in the Arts Commission. So I, I did want to make a call for that. And I would encourage any uh, community members, if you see a place or have ideas about how we can improve um, art in public places um, here in Capitola, please um, you know, contact the Arts Commission um, and bring us your ideas. But we look forward to this next year to many of the projects that Larry just announced. And then I will stop and so if you have any questions thank you okay i think you have some questions yeah oh. uh, I'm okay, after i'll go after that i have some questions well thank you councilman story this was i absolutely love what the commission does i benefit from all of the annual events and so does my four-year-old so i really really love everything that goes on and i really appreciate um, seeing the timeline for 2020 and the focus on 41st avenue and projects taking place there um, when I was reviewing the goals, the only thing that kind of stood out to me was the possibility of the removal of the trees and planters um, on, at, in Esplanade Park. Um, 
And so I, my only suggestion would be, since I don't sit on the commission, um, would be that um, a, a plan be brought forward to us before that actually that before actually before. happens. Um, because again, like I said, my, my little one, and I know a lot of other little ones really love those trees and really what, what is over there. Yeah, and just to uh, respond to that, that particular project um, uh, actually was discussed and approved at the commission before I had um, started on it. Uh, but just to clarify, all the concepts um, come to the council uh, before they get implemented. Okay. So y there will be an opportunity you will be uh, able to weigh in on particular uh, projects that the Arts Commission proposes in the community. Fantastic, thank you. Ed? Just a quick question. A couple months ago, uh, the Art Commission came to us with some placement of some spheres. Uh, did they ever figure out where those uh, spheres are gonna wind up? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, we have not. We um, um, kind of uh, tabled that particular item because um, there was uh, a need to, and I think what the council had proposed, look for a different location uh, to place them. So I, that's still being studied. Uh, one of the things that's on the uh, commission's um, project plan list is to really get an inventory of the places in the community where it may be appropriate to put uh, public art. Um, and we will be looking at and coming back and uh, looking at the uh, idea about those um, spheres, uh, globes, sea globes. Um, and, you know, there's possibilities of, you know, maybe when the new jetty is uh, rebuilt, maybe that would be a possible location, or when the new, w when the wharf is rebuilt, whether it would be suitable to put there. So I just say that that's still a, a, a work in progress. Okay, thank, thank you. you for that update. Yes, you got. Uh, and if I may board walk on that a little bit, um, I, I would be interested in Thanks. keeping an eye on the the sea lion sculpture just because summer is approaching, hot, warm weather, and just yeah. we, I had some concerns about about that getting really hot, and, and I understand that those spheres were gonna uh, be at, made of the same material. So just something to kind of keep an eye on. Um, would I would appreciate that for the Yeah, no, thank you. And, and that did kind of come up at our last meeting, uh, the discussion about um, uh, whether they may get too hot, you know, in the, in the summertime. So we will be keeping an eye on that. Yeah. Kristen? Yeah, actually, I do have a, a quick comment. Um, I, I may be incorrect, but I want to say that I remember the discussion of the trees and the Esplanade Park remodel happening last year. Um, so is there is there an opportunity to get an update on that? Um, because I, I want to say that we had already chosen new trees and plans for shade and uh, a whole new remodel, correct? So I, I think what it is, um, Councilmember Peterson, we came up with a, a conceptual plan, yeah. and phase one was actually the sea lion sculpture. Okay. Th yeah. And then we would, after we got through phase one, we'd look at phase two, and there were some, and it was mainly focused on the artistic elements, which included, you know, another sort of shade. Um, the idea was that you would, with that center row of trees, you'd open it up so it could be more of a, a continuous, um, I guess area for uh, people to watch the shows, and then the other piece of it, I, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember if, if which was phase one or which was or phase two and phase three, was doing something with the showers, making that a, an mm -hmm. artistic yeah. shower wall. Yeah. Yes, a shower yeah. wall of some sort, and um, like I said, with the the sea line was phase phase one, and I think it's time that we're probably going to be bringing back in the next meeting or two with with the okay. commission to look start looking at phase, see what they want to do with phase two and phase three. And we, we'll probably revisit the whole thing because it has been a, a little while at this point. Sure. Okay. So we just approved the concept and Correct. not the, okay, perfect, right. thank you. Okay, yeah, um, I think it is time to revisit those. I had some concerns about tree removal myself. Um, also, um, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit later when we talk about the public uh, um, capital projects, but I do have concern that the, uh, the mural is uh, largely <laughs> obscured by uh, portable potties. And so I'd like to have a project where the city actually figures out a way to uh, completely reveal, uh, reveal the uh, murals rather than having porta potties in front of it. Those are my comments. So at this point, are there any comments from the members of the public? 
Okay, so bringing back to council, I think uh, it's a report to receive and that's it. Okay, thank you very much, Larry. So on to item B, general plan land use element and land use map update. Request the report from Director Hurley. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Okay, before you tonight, I have the general plan cleanup. Um, this is a repeat item for a few of you. Uh, previous Community Development Director Gruno had brought this to you in 2018 at the initiation of this process. Um, what we are doing is in 2014, the general plan was adopted. And then following the general plan adoption, the zone we started working on the zoning code update. Throughout that process, we noticed that there were inconsistencies between the general plan that was adopted and the direction we were getting with the zoning code. So this is really to clean up any inconsistencies, reflect on the current conditions, and then to add clarity to several items. So there's eight um, items to discuss tonight, and then there were a lot of mapping changes. I have a slide on each mapping change. I'm not gonna go through them slide by slide, but if you have any questions on any of the mapping changes, I'm happy to bring those up. So um, when Planning Commission and City Council reviewed this back in February and March of 2018, the, uh, the requests were to proceed with the proposed general plan amendments to clarify that additional floor area in the village would only apply to the former Capitola Theater site and to extend the public review period to 60 days. And there was also a request to change the name of um, the sing residential single family designation to R1 to be consistent with the zoning code, the land use map within the land use map and for residential <coughs> multifamily to be RM to be consistent with zoning. So the mapping changes, I will um, move forward with uh, this change after this evening because didn't, I didn't want to make further updates to that map until I had all edits. Mm -hmm. So that will be input. So the changes that have taken place, we've revised table LU1 to add the Rispin Mansion Park and to delete planned um, before the completed, for the now completed McGregor Park. We also revised figure LU3 to add the Rispin Park site. So, and in this image, we will be modifying the map to show the correct parcel for the um, McGregor Park. Right now it's too large. It's actually a smaller square over in Brighton. The next change was um, how how um, is was addressing how we should calculate residential development intensity um, within the commercial and mixed use areas. The it can either be done through floor area limitations, in which you look at floor area, height, setbacks, open space, and parking, or through density limits, which is units per acre with the same development standards as the FAR. Um, our previous general plan always used floor area and development standards within the commercial and mixed use designations, and our previous zoning code always used floor area and development standards. The current general plan is unclear. So what we'd like to do within this edit is to clarify how the, the, it will be treated. I do want to point out that under the new zoning code, um, the first um, draft of the zoning code that went out, it did include a density limit and it, and it carried through until adoption of 20 units per acre within the um, commercial zones and the mixed use zones. This was done in error. I think in the transposing of the old code to the new, it was added. There, I went back to the original Planning Commission and general uh, and um, City Council minutes and nowhere did I see direction that staff should have added that. So I think it was something that was transposed at the very beginning of the three year process and was not caught, unfortunately. So I'll take that as my mistake, but um, moving forward tonight, we're asking um, if you'd like to have the current general plan reflect the way it's always been done with floor area ratio and development standards. And um, with that, to modify the new zoning code. And the Planning Commission supported that direction when we took it to Planning Commission. And here's the red line change, just explaining that it would be residential uses and commercial and mixed 
these designations shall be subject to floor area ratio limitations and not dwelling units per acre of density. Next, um, during a recent. Oh, excuse me, question. Are we going to deal with these one by one, or are we going to deal with all of your hope that we deal with these all at one, all at one? If you'd like, I can stop after the slides, or we can come back to them. Let's I would say. I, don't, I don't know what the. Get an eight overview. Items, said eight, eight. There's eight. Yep. Yeah, just get an overview and then come back, uh, Sam. Yeah, that's exactly what I would suggest. You know, maybe we could just have an overview summary so we are uh, viewing all the items. But I think in, in discussing and approving that we do each one separately. Okay, each one separately. Okay. And come back. Thank you. Okay. The next one was um, the outcome of a density bonus application that came to the city under the state density bonus law. The applicants allowed to use the um, higher density listed in either your zoning code or your general plan. And our general plan was not as specific as our zoning code so we brought back the specificity so that the two match now so if ever a density bonus application were to come in both the zoning code and the general plan would be in sync uh, visitor accommodations this is also just uh, to sync it with the what we did within the zoning code so to remove the visitor accommodation land use designation as a kind of a base land use designation and introduce the visitor serving overlay simple cleanup. Next, um, the, the changes to, uh, under the general plan, a lot of work was done initially uh, through the public process of getting feedback on future development of the theater site. And I, th I think there was one sp um, general plan meeting that was uh, involved a lot of the public that was just about the theater site and future development there. Within policy LU7 point, or within the goal LU7, this is where this was addressed. And um, during the initial review by Planning Commission, they had asked that we add specificity under LU7.3, where um, the policy, the action item is to allow additional floor area ratio for the. Um, for a future hotel in the village, and the Planning Commission originally had asked that it be specific to the future Capitola Theater site. Um, the new Planning Commission, during their recent review in February, um, they, they requested, when they made their motion for this to move forward, they said, let's move forward with all the changes proposed except for the red lines included here. And the idea w w there was to keep it more broad and allow other um, properties to come in possibly under the three for the FAR of three. Um, I always want to support my planning commission, but I do have concerns with the direction with the amount of public process that went into the original um, concept in the general plan. So if we were to move forward and start thinking about allowing this FAR of three to be on other sites, I think it, it does warrant a public process and more thought. Uh, the other thing is, is the, um, the FAR of three for this site was very specific to the site of allowing more density where there's a bluff behind it and additional development can um, be taken in on that site because of that bluff behind it and there's not some another building behind it in which a view would be taken. So and it was very clear in the development standards that the views from above should be protected and um, very specific to that site. And also the way in which um, in the layout of this section of the general plan, it's within two pages and it's very clear that there was a map identifying the village theater site on the same page as the standards for the future hotel. So I think the intent was there and the cleanup would help as staff as questions come in to say that it's specific to that site to have the red line in. And I also wanted to point out that within the new zoning code, we also added specificity for the um, theater site. So within the eligibility under the incentives for community benefits in the new zoning code, it says a hotel on the former Capitola theater site and that has APNs listed in the mixed use village zoning. So that's the site that's eligible for additional incentives. So by putting it in the general plan, we're creating consistency. 
The next item is also for consistency. It's on 41st Avenue, talking about the increased floor area. This is another one where the, it, within the uh, zoning code, we got more specific about where um, increased density is allowed along 41st Avenue, and we made it more specific to include the mall property and explain that it's the mall property bound by 41st Avenue, Capitola Road, and Clare Street, so another um, adding more detail. And then the last item is the land use map. So the land use map, we found a lot of inconsistencies that um, I have slides on each item if you had any questions on that attachment, but I'm not going to go through each change with you. There were quite a few. So with that, that concludes my presentation. Um, this evening, we're recommending adoption of the addendum to the general plan update environmental impact report and approval of a resolution adopting amendments to the city of Capitola general plan land use element and the general plan land use map. Okay. Um, as Ed suggested, let's go through each item and if we have questions, then we'll um, ask those questions at that point and then make a motion for each particular item and either approve it or not. Any questions relating the park information? I have a, um, two questions there. Um, in terms of the library, we have a children's area there. Um, how is that dealt with in terms of the city as a park? Is it considered part of the library? Is it, I mean, we developed that separately, so I'm just a question about that. It's a public facility mm -hmm. is how it's designated. Okay. And I'd like to include a proposed park in, in that list. Is that possible at this point? Um, if we've missed, have we missed a park? No, no, it's a, it's a totally new park. Is this the time to do that or should I wait for something like this, uh, city manager? General plan amendment maker. I, I'm not entirely clear. M maybe you could help us understand a little bit more about what you're thinking. And um, For about two years, I've been working on trying to develop something in the Cormac Triangle in that area and actually get that to become a park. So I'm just trying to move that forward and is this a time to put that on the list for proposed parks? It My recommendation would be let's let's identify that as a specific project and we can develop it through the council. I think listing it in the general plan at this stage. Okay, thank you. Premature. Any other questions on the uh, park list? I'm gonna make a motion or suggest to approve the uh, park cleanup information. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move on. Okay, the next was how to um, calculate future development with for residential within commercial and mixed use zones. Any questions? No, so this is the one where the uh, Planning Commission recommended going back to the uh, FA FAR, not the density limit. Yeah, the exactly. I'm with the moving the arrow to the left, so I'm going to recommend uh, Planning Commission's recommendation motion for that. Second. Second, Second by Kristen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move on. Okay, uh, multifamily residential. This is just syncing up the dwelling units per acre with the zoning code. Any questions? Is there a motion? Yeah. Motion to sync density. Okay. Yeah, I'll Second. move. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move on. Next is to remove visitor accommodations, knowing that we now have a visitor overlay. Okay, any questions? Is there a motion? Motion to approve visitor accommodations. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next one. Next is the former Capitola Theater site. The Planning Commission recommendation was not to accept the red lines, specifying the former Capitola Theater site within the FAR. I'm going to have a discussion on this. Yes, I, I, okay. I'm, I love my planning commission and my planning commissioners, but I think this was a mistake, unfortunately. Uh, I think we've discussed this topic in much detail, and uh, the, 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 the exceptions and allowances that we granted were, in my opinion, specifically for the hotel site. So I'm going to make a motion that uh, I think I want to leave. My motion would be to leave the red lines <laughs> in then. That's my motion. I'm going to second that motion. Um, I was involved in the general plan. In, you know, and I think Ed, you were there too, and yeah. I specifically recall uh, that that was specifically uh, for that particular site uh, because of the uniqueness of it. Um, and I think there would just be, as much as I appreciate the Planning Commission's effort, it would just be too much of one a general plan amendment. Um, and I'm just leery of the potential impacts of, of granting that um, 
extension to any of the potential hotel projects. So that's why I'm seconding the motion and will support it. Okay. Um, uh, second received, I'd like to make a comment. I was also at uh, the general plan, and that was a two day workshop. There was a lot of public discussion about everything to deal with the um, proposed hotel, and I think there was a lot of solidification around this particular issue. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought they might have wanted to comment. I, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No I comment. Okay, I, okay, I'm just going, okay. Next item, please. My, my apologies. Okay. Next item, please. Um, 41st Avenue, in, uh, description of where the incentivized area for along 41st Avenue. And, and I believe, I'm reading this, is this is okay to, to allow the increased uh, FAR inside the mall property? That's correct. Yeah, yes. I'm going to make a motion to support the, that inclusion. I'll second. second. Okay, uh, Kristen, let's go. Okay, okay, there's a motion and a second. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Next item, please. And changes to the uh, general plan land use map, understanding that there will be a change to the single family residential, noting that it's R1 and multifamily residential as RM. Motion to upgrade the map. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Thank you. And um, I think your presentation was very good, got to all the issues and helped us along. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I reviewed all those map changes. Uh, do, do the commissioners want to, re uh, excuse me, do council members want to re review all the map changes? Any no questions? Okay, oh, I think we thanks, just did thank that. Thank you anyway. for not opening I up the yeah. bees nest. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> I do need the actual votes on to approve the EIR and to approve the resolution. Yes. That's the last right one. Back to the first one. Okay. Motion to approve the EIR and the resolution. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> thanks. Okay, that's Blend. it. Thank you very much. Okay, moving along. Probably have more discussion about this. Moving along to item C, consider fiscal year 2019 2020 budget principles and goals. Mr. Mayor, member of the council, this, so this is a presentation and a process that we go through each and every year, kind of to kick off our budget cycle. And the intent of our budget, which you've heard me say many times, is, is really develop a sort of blueprint plan for this city, develop kind of where our priorities are where we put our resources and what are going to be our projects for the upcoming fiscal year. And it establishes the framework that staff uses to implement the council's priorities. Um, the key, one of the key steps here is, is having the council identify what they would like to see as the high level priorities for the development of the budget. And the staff then takes, will develop a draft budget and then bring it through the public process uh, for review. In addition, the other advantage to doing this early is, is it helps articulate what the council's priorities are, both the staff uh, as well as to the community as a whole. So these principles, I think, as I mentioned, they provide kind of that overarching guide to the budget and, and a, uh, ensuring that the budget is consistent with where the council sees uh, the city going. One of the things I would like to try to do this year is to focus a little bit more on kind of the key projects. In the past, um, we haven't used this opportunity maybe to have the council adopt key projects, yeah. uh, which I think can be helpful to have the council identify what the uh, really critical things are to work on in the next coming years, whether they're big infrastructure projects or they're more process or planning oriented. It definitely helps uh, give staff, I think, some guidance and it can help with future uh, prioritization as issues develop down the road. Um, our budget principles have evolved over time. I think this was early in my tenure as city manager. We really identified the high level principles and then we identified specific uh, goals for the fiscal year and then identified where in the budget and the metrics that were going to be used to, to measure the, uh, achieving those goals. Uh, they evolved over time, sometimes getting maybe a little bit simpler. Um, that sort of Uber management focus uh, maybe gave way to more sort of a pragmatic uh, approach. Uh, and then it evolved further in 16, 17, where it was a relatively sort of quick list of overall fiscal policy, public service principles, and public improvement principles. Um, 
for 1819, we had our sort of overall budget principles that were kind of the relatively consistent principles about in those sort of three key issue areas, the public service, fiscal, and infrastructure. And then we identified some key work plan items. One was um, options to for the council to consider to address CalPERS, rising CalPERS costs, complete our cannabis regulatory framework, implement a new neighborhood watch program, work towards the Coastal Commission certification of our zoning code, and continuing to work uh, with the mall ownership group to re on redevelopment. We also identified a number of um, capital improvement priorities, which was beginning construction on the library, uh, building the Jetty Wharf, Jetty and Flume projects, and then completing the design for the wharf, and then other capital projects included the Rispin Park, um, Bromer Park Avenue, and S Story Seal project. So that's what we did in 1819. Um, so for tonight, one of the things I'm asking council is to take a look at these fiscal policy, these sort of broad fiscal fault uh, policies, which have been relatively consistent year to year and they include maintaining a balanced budget to ensure that we meet ongoing expenditures, mm -hmm. ongoing revenues and ongoing expenditures are matching, make sure we're using one-time revenue for one-time expenditures, and ensure the budget plans for the cost increases as we look out into the future. Uh, we've identified pretty consistent public service principles that we've used in the past, which is maintain and improve upon the transparency of city operations and accessibility to the government. Uh, recognize the high priority that this community places on public safety and analyze future service level increases for their long-term fiscal impact to ensure stability. Um, and then for our public improvement principles has been uh, focused on pavement management, um, imp maintaining and improving our natural resources and sustainable green programs, and then maintaining in the cleanliness of our uh, city facilities, streets, and sidewalks. So those have kind of been the broad policies, and, and that'll be one of the things we'll ask the council tonight is, it, are those still where we want to be, or are there changes that we'd like to do to that? And then I'd like us to also take a little bit of time to focus on the key projects. And and I think I've already talked about kind of why they're important, but, but I think, so interestingly, 10 years ago, the city used to not do the overall budget priorities, but really did kind of annual key projects. Uh, and that was sort of the city's goal setting session. It was identifying what are the five key projects we're gonna do this year. When I come in, came on as manager, I tried to take it as a higher level and try to identify our key you know, overall strategic goals. Um, I think that there could be some value though in having the council take a moment to uh, maybe all the council members identify what they would like to see happen, the key big things, and then have uh, a vote and have the council try to establish you know, five or six key projects that then we could incorporate into <coughs> the budget and ensure that we have the work plan and the resources associated with it. So that's one thing I'd like to give a shot. Um, and these are just some ideas. They're not necessarily all of them. They're not necessarily the council's, but we listed out a number of things that we think uh, we could consider as key projects. One is the CalPERS issue. Two is continuing to work with Coastal Commission on the zoning code certification. The mall redevelopment remains a project. Uh, finishing the library and uh, finishing the wharf design. Uh, complete our rec strategic plan, which is a new project that came out of our last meeting potentially. Um, the review and evaluation of our community grant program. Um, we're also gonna be implementing the, the cannabis regulatory structure and developing, developing that regulatory structure audit and inspection plan. These are just ideas, and I think the council members may have uh, their own. So that's where we're seeking direction on this evening is, is I guess number one is, is the format. We've used a number of different formats, and um, I think staff I think our preference may be to kind of go back to that original format and really tie kind of our high level policies uh, and principles and then into the key projects and then into the specific budget met metrics. I think it gives something more tangible to evaluate our performance against. Um, and then confirm our high level budget principles and then uh, identify five to six projects. And at this point we have about 15 more minutes before we'll be recessing this meeting for uh, our special meeting. And I'm available for questions. Questions of the city manager, Sam. And with that, do you want to know? I just need a clarifying sure. question before we move forward. Is when we when we jump into this, is that to assume that the projects from 1819 that were incomplete or halfway complete that we're not moving forward with those? Because I'd like to see a list of where we're at, so then we're not 
being, you know, being redundant in our efforts? That's a good question. So often with this is we will do a little bit of a, well, why am I not finding it here? Was it? This is, this is, um, we've often done a little bit of a um, written summary of how we've done against these work plan items and what the status of these are. Uh, verbally, I can say the CalPERS issue is not solved. It won't be solved in any given year. It's going to be an ongoing effort. The cannabis regulatory framework we did, we've done that, uh, and it's been implemented, and it's now out, and we're getting applications. I think they're due by the end of this month for, um, for, a new re for the retail licenses. The new Neighborhood Watch program, I believe, is is up and running. Uh, the Coastal Commission certification process is long and winding, and uh, Katie's made some great progress on it. I think it we'll be seeing something in front of the council, but I don't think it's going to be done. I think we're going to be essentially proposing kind of a piecemeal approach and getting the easy stuff done. There will still continue to be some hard things to work out with them. And then the mall um, redevelopment continues to be a pending project. I hope it starts before the end of this fiscal year. Um, but that's, that's kind of a quick status update on these, and I think they do deserve a more in-depth review, and they will, in the budget, certainly get that more sort of full explanation of where they where they are at the close of the fiscal year. Um, and if I may, is this the entire list that previous council adopted? So this was the entire list, and then in addition, they so they were broken into public service and fiscal and then capital improvement priorities, and so this was the capital improvement priorities and I can talk about where these each stand if you would like a quick update. Well, uh, again, to go back to my original question is, out of the three areas of all the 18, 19 adopted items, you know, which ones were completed and which ones weren't, and so then we can maybe have a better, you know, better discussion so we're not so redundant, or, you know, I'm not bringing right. up mall, and, you know, we're in the middle of it or something like that. I just, just for, we try and get some continuity from before. Yeah, and right, to before the we, you're right, because we don't have this, in, I mean, we have some of that. that yeah. has been we can certainly do that, if that would be helpful, is go through these and provide kind of more in either matrix or table format, kind of where the status of these projects are. Um, I can't do that. I can do it verbally right now, but I can, I can't, uh, I can do the matrix for a future What's meeting. our timeline on this at this point? So we're, we're heading into budget, why don't, why don't want to get the finance driver? director up here with me. Uh, we're heading into budget development. Um, we, this isn't a got to do tonight. Uh, we certainly could continue this item for another couple weeks. Um, we're going to be into heavy budget development here in the next. Good, e good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, we'll be kicking off. This is kind of the kickoff to the budget process right now. Um, I'll send out kind of the worksheets where um, all the department heads and staff will start putting together numbers, but this will be a kind of evolving process with the goals and the priorities as we're going through. What we're kind of looking for tonight is just kind of that baseline so we can get started as, as we start looking at how we can allocate resources. We want to make sure we're directing those towards council priorities as much as possible. Yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. It's, it would be hard to set a priority that might be really expensive to complete if we have five other projects going on that would, you know, what would be feasible and what wouldn't. I'm, I'm struggling with a little bit of that. If I may, it does, would it help at all to suggest that any of the priorities from last year that haven't been met continue to stay on our priority list? Would that yeah, help? Would that know. Yeah, suit the purposes that you're? Yeah, okay. I think that's what the does one that slide had, didn't it? Didn't the one slide have yeah, pretty much of a carryover of? It did. So then you're, you're the, the moving slide. forward, we're looking to identify five to six additional to this it, list? In addition to the things that are continuing from last year, correct? Well, I mean, I think it's council discretion on this one. These, you know, I, I, I put together, this is more than five or seven. I'm not sure how many that is, if that's. Yeah, that's not 18. Is this the list you were hoping to whittle down to five or six? This is just sort of a list to start the conversation. For this year? For this year. Right, but I think if I'm understanding correctly, the question is, is the what list that the we had, yeah, the ones from last year, are we carrying them over? The first three on that list are from last year. Right. Oh, okay, so then everything else we're kind of figured, we, we, we're done, we, we did it. Yeah, and in fact, the first four, uh, because the library and okay. wharf projects also showed up on last year's, and in, yeah, on last year's project as well, on last year's project list as okay. well. 
So if I'm hearing that correctly, the 18, 19 items that have not been completed are the first four items here today being presented. You, you look a little hesitant, Jim. Well, I want to make sure that I'm, <laughs> if I say yes, that that's exactly <laughs> the case. The, the Bromer Street project is ready for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bromer Street isn't done today. I'm not sure if it's going to be done before the close of the fiscal year or not. Help me out, Steve. I'll just run through them. So you know the library project, uh, the Jetty and the Flume, <coughs> we, the last we meeting. Postponed, yeah. yeah, we postponed that. Um, we're getting ready to do, uh, come back with some ideas on the design on the wharf shortly to the council. We'll be able to move that one forward. Brisbane Park um, kind of got put on the back shelf as we were working on the library project because there was some potential to impact the Brisbane property with the library project at one point. So we are now um, going through and there were some drainage issues and grade problems were that we discovered when we put the ADA pathway in there um, as part of another project. So we're finalizing, finalizing that and hope to get that wrapped up here in the next month or so. Uh, as far as the street project, Brummer Street, um, we're holding the community meeting. Uh, we probably have a design at 50% right now. Park Avenue, which is a sidewalk project, uh, we actually hope to go to bid in a month on um, and get that built and the Surrey Seal is completed. And the Rispin, is, is there a potential there'll be some work done on that this year? Is that yeah. potentially? Yeah. Yep. May, may I add to the, uh, so everything on that list except one is incomplete at this point. Yes. Well, we began construction, but on the right, library. Right. But so. so would it be important to ensure that we say, state today that we add these to continue on? I'm, so I'm just trying, to, just for clarity, that we would have to state today that these projects need to be on our 1920 priorities list in order for them to continue. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Con uh, Councilwoman Brooks. So, so what I'm hoping to get away from is, I mean, if we budget a CIP project, our assumption as staff is it's important to get it done. And what I'm trying, to, I'm hoping for is that when we talk about kind of the strategic goals of the city, kind of the really high level projects, that it's maybe bigger than one individual CIP project. I mean, in the case of the library, you know, as, since it was the largest project we've done in a long time, it could have stood alone, I think. But I think I felt like at some point as a high level priority for this point in the budget process that some of these things got a little bit um, a little bit further into the weeds than we needed to. Is that does that help at all? What, what about a, what about a bullet point just saying that one of our priori priorities for this year is to continue to prioritize our priorities from last year or complete our CIP our funded CIP projects. Yeah. Does that work? Well, I, 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 mean, I, I guess I'm, um, my understanding is that the Bromer Street project is, is a funded capital project. It's so the money is sitting in the budget. We're not going to be wrangling with how to fund that project. And so for budgetary purposes, to me, it's an accomplished budget item. We don't need to focus on it. Of course, there's management in following it through, and we want to see that done. I assume that's the same for the Park Avenue uh, project. It's a funded project. Slurry Seal has been done. So to me, the questions are, what are the critical projects that are not funded and that maybe we want to try to put some focus on and see if we can get some agreement that for budgetary purposes, we would be looking at those items, um, i.e. Clare Street. Not that I'm trying to put out <laughs> one of my priorities, but Go ahead. It's, yeah. a, it, it's, it's an unfunded item. So as an example, I would think that that would be added to the priorities list um, for budgetary purposes. And so that's kind of the way I look at it. And so. May, may I? Yes. Um, I, I would hope that Ed, that was the case. Sorry, Ed. No, go um, ahead. I, would, I would hope that, that that's the case, that in fact that all of these have been, bud been budgeted and that they will be completed so that when we add additional things, for example, like Claire's to the list, that we won't run into any issues with, with budget constraints. So that's, that's just my concern that. So is that true that all of these items have been budgeted and in fact have? 
Councilwoman Brooks, yes, that's a simple answer. I mean, you know, I think there's are scenarios where we would end up with such a big CIP that we would have to start really looking at, okay, which are the ones that actually can move forward and which are the ones that can't. We're not going to have that big of a CIP next year um, that I think that we really need to get in a position of saying, you know, look, which are the 10 <coughs> most important that we're going to be adding this year. Thank Ed? you. Yeah, you know, I, I think we're at a crossroads, and I appreciate where the city manager is trying to lead us. I think uh, philosophically the city manager wants us to go down a path of seeking the higher level, may, maybe because ultimately he knows that there's not a lot of money to do, like Sammy mentioned, the projects that need to get done. But where I think Councilmember Brooks is, is falling back on, and, and I'm a little biting into this a little also, is we've got a lot of projects, and there's a key word, and it's not everybody's fault, but there's a word called delay, okay? and. We could actually say that the rispin has been delayed for 28 years, okay? And I know that, I Sam, I think you were actually here the last time we funded the last amount of money to make sure that the rispin would be finally built. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so, so and, and I think Councilman Brooks wants to, she'd like to scratch things <laughs> off on the top knowing that they're done so we can just keep moving down the list, whereas the city manager wants to broaden our, 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 our outlook and I'm with Councilmember Brooks. I just like to scratch a couple boxes, okay, knowing that they're done, okay. Not Park Avenue is Steve, not not you. We're Steve. No, it's been a long project. It's going to be a, a final uh, conclusion to have sidewalks on Park Avenue. I can't remember the famous council or uh, a council attendee that lived, uh, the woman that lived on where the street was. She came to all the meetings, complained that she was never was going to die before there were sidewalks on Park Avenue. Oh Sandy? God! Don't Sandy, bring her, don't there we go. Bring her Thank up. you. <laughs> okay, and we still don't have park sidewalks on Park Avenue, so she was a, uh, a, pro a prophet. Okay, but so she moved. Yeah, I know she moved. She finally <laughs> did. She gave up. She moved to Texas. She didn't want to die. <laughs> but the thing is, we still don't have sidewalks on Park Avenue, so she was kind of right. So Ooh. I'd like to get those out. And then for me, I'm a little bit with Sam. I mean, I, there's a couple projects that I, I mean, I realize that our focus is still the library. And that's a great project, and I think it's all paid for. But I'm also believing that because of things that happen, there might be some residual funds left over that may actually allow us to do some projects that were never completed, okay? Because the one thing we did when we went all in Texas Hold'em for the library, we didn't do any other projects in this town for a long time. And so I think we might, when, when you bring up to us, and specifically me, that you want council members suggest their project, we might all have one pet project that we'd like to throw out there. And it may be a tangible project, not necessarily this philosophical li list that, you know, oh, here we go. <laughs> I've been saying, <laughs> maybe, you're, you're, maybe you're anticipating, but I, but I appreciate the philosophy of wanting us to really develop the cannabis project and to get the mall on board. And, and, to, I, I, and those are priorities, but um, I would love to be able to address council member Brooks's concern about well, what have we actually completed and when does it go away? So. And I will note that we have one minute till this special meeting needs to begin. Any other comments? Um, I, I've become aware I don't think that- we have any members of the public here that are here to speak, so. Okay, I, I just wanna make one last comment. I've become well aware since I've been in this position how long projects take and a lot of it's depending on funding and grants that we get, um, working with neighbors and um, defining plans like Park Avenue. When I ran for city council the first time, that was a big issue, and now we're finally getting to full funding, and the neighbors are all agreed on, and the plans are hopefully well. And Claire's that you brought up, I mean, that was goes back to RDA. <laughs> so I think it's 8.30, and let's move to our special meeting here. Do we need to adjourn? Is this the way we do it? I think we wouldn't adjourn, we would recess. recess. Okay. okay, I'd like to recess uh, this uh, regular city council meeting and come back to order to 8.30 meeting for a special meeting. And uh, we are all present. Uh, all materials have been received. Uh, this is to deal with government, um, uh, excuse me, a budget amendment to fund emergency tree removal of city hall. Is there a report, Steve? Yes, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, item before you tonight at the special meeting is to consider a uh, emergency tree removal project at City Hall. Um, public Works staff had asked um, Arborist James Allen, who's worked for the city for over the past decade, to inspect 13 trees, um, predominantly 
between the city hall building and the upper parking lot and one other tree that was located between the two, uh, the upper and the lower parking lot. He evaluated these trees for health stability and potential impacts if failure occurs. Um, of the 13, six trees were found to be relatively healthy, three rated a six, and I'm going to explain the ratings to you in a minute. One was rated an eight, two was nine, but seven of the trees were found to be high risk trees, four were rated an 11, and uh, three were out of 10, and all those ratings are out of 12. So a rating of six means the tree has no anticipated problems for the next 10 years, and there's three of those. An eight is no anticipated problems for one to five years, there's one of those. Uh, the nine is trees has issues but not likely to fall apart right away. Uh, eventual removal is likely for those, and those are two. And then 10 and 11 become the probability of failure is significant and is getting serious and mitigation measures should be scheduled and implemented soon or now. And 11 is a tree has reached a state where it could fail at any time and uh, action is required within weeks. So that's why we're here tonight is um, we have certain certain amount of 11s that exist um, immediately behind us here at City Hall, the one between the parking lot and a couple 10s too that we, um, it's a good, good time to take care of them. So I've just prepared this map um, to identify the trees here. Obviously here's City Hall over to the left, with the police department. This is the upper parking lot. So you can see we have um, just immediately behind the City Hall building, we have an oak tree. Um, two oak trees and the other ones located between the parking lot that are both 11s. Uh, they have significant rot within their trunks and uh, they could fail immediately. Uh, we've actually closed off the parking down here below this oak tree on the lower lot um, so that it doesn't fall on any cars. Um, after the oak trees, we have a series of eucalyptus trees. There's five of them that we're recommending be removed. Three of them are immediately behind City Hall, all of them rated 10s or 11s. And then we have two up near the rail corridor, and the uh, both of those rated 10s, 10s or 11s, and one of them is located in the railroad right away. I think we may have said, thought there was two, but we've measured it, and this, tr this one is outside the rail corridor. Um, and, the S and the Regional Transportation Commission has agreed to help pay for that one. Um, we've kind of talked to them about a $4,000 price tag. If that, um, as we get final bids, um, I'm sure we'll, we'll go for whatever that pri uh, tree goes for. Um, we're getting a lump sum bid, so it's kind of a, all the trees equal. Um, this tree's actually not that difficult to remove. They're gonna, it's tall, just like all the other eucalyptus, but they're gonna be able to sit on a crane right here and just pick it apart. So the recommendations tonight are to authorize the city manager to con contract for the immediate removal of the seven trees that have a risk assessment rating of 10 or higher at a cost not to exceed $33,000 and approve a budget transfer of $33,000 from the facility fund appropriation for city hall improvements to the tree service contract allocation within the parks department. Any questions yeah. of Steve? Uh, Christine has a question. The, um, the inspection by the arborist, did that take place before the tree that's already fallen fell? Yes, it was something we looked at. Um, it, it, we initiated it about before the winter, but we had to clear some ivy and, and do some stuff so he could see it. So we initiated it probably back in November, and he was just able to complete it in the last uh, in the end of February. Um, and so, and he hadn't looked at the tree that recently failed since 2017. Okay. That was not part of the 13 trees we asked him to look at. Okay. But I think coincidentally, they were actually out the next day doing the inspection. Yeah. It was, it was initiated months ago. But right. Yeah. But yeah. the trees that we're looking at are clearly at risk of doing the same thing. Yes. Okay. I'm going to, I mean, open for discussion clearly, but I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we uh, approve staff recommendation. Okay. Um, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Ed. Uh, our ability to get a better price for the tree removal, is it somewhere contingent upon how many trees are out there? I mean, is it obviously removing seven is we're getting a better price than removing two? Uh, yeah, I think. Is I there some benefit to them being on site? That's what I'm trying to get here. 
Yes, obviously there's yeah. mobilization costs. The more we move, the the cheaper per tree we would pay. Right. Yes. And since there's already been a motion, I'm just going to want to add to this. I, I have some concerns about also including the two number nine trees. I don't see if we're going to come out here and do tens and elevens, and we've got other trees that are eminent within, you know, w whatever the terminology you had for a number nine, <coughs> it's, it's two additional trees. Yeah, um, I was actually looking at the nines. Actually, one of them is an oak tree. Um, okay, above it's not that big of an oak tree. I think we can actually do some trimming and, and nurse that one along if you'd want. The other is a eucalyptus tree, and I would fully support removing any eucalyptus right, tree. I would like to make a friendly motion amendment to include the number nines. I'm the second accepts that. Okay, uh, Sam. Sir, I was just going to maybe to ask for public comment. So yes, uh, this last question. No more questions. Okay, is there any public comment? Seeing none, back to the City Council for motion. Well, we already have a motion. Well, we have a motion. I, I would motion. just like to add maybe we also direct staff to move as expeditiously as possible <laughs> <laughs> to make this happen. I, I believe we hope to have a contractor on site Monday. Okay, right. great. Great, okay. thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so passed. Thank you. Move back to regular meeting. All right, so I, we got one of our key goals done. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So we're still on life. budget <laughs> principles. <laughs> so I think Council Member Bodorf left this off, I mean, pretty succinctly summarizing where we are. You know, there's, there's a question between uh, any guidance that the council can give, either as a body or as individuals at this stage, is going to be helpful for staff as we sort of start developing the budget. Whether we can do it this evening or whether we want to continue it for another two weeks, that's, that's certainly the council's option. Um, we did sort of set this up potentially for each council member to list out what they would like to see as kind of key budget items and then hopefully have the council as a whole come up with, you know, winnow the list, list down and come up with their priorities. Scott? Yes, Ed. I, I, I'm gonna, so I'll start. And, and, and I go back to that list that you had with your, your, your optimistic list, not specifically this one, the one that had the items. Some that will carry over that you mentioned. These. I, I support everyone that's on there and moving forward with each one of those. I think some of them are wrapping up as we speak. And specifically for me, I'm just gonna make my pitch for my, since if you go on to go to the other chart for my name, um, we had a presentation earlier from the Art Commission and there's a project that for lack of a better terms, I like to call it the lipstick on a pig project, is the um, um, art wall that's in front of the Bella Rova restaurant. And I think we've made a lot of effort to improve all of our access from the uh, beach parking lots into the village and that one section of sidewalk I think is still a hazard. We never dealt with it. We had a temporary fence there. We put up that absolutely gorgeous fence that we did, but we never put in the wall and the sidewalks and completed that project. And we realized there were no funds available for that project because we diverted everything into the library. I want to guess that it's probably a $150,000 project to dig that out, put in the retaining wall, replace the sidewalk, and then reinstall the art wall back on top of that. And that, that's, that would complete both sides of the street access from the beach parking lots into the, uh, into the village. And I believe that side of the street is a hev heavily traffic street, and that project is long overdue. That's my pitch. Okay. You done? Yeah, we I got, we're going down the list here. Um, so I, I want to make sure that I that we complete all CIP 1819 projects. Um, <coughs> coming in and e when I've brought up the Clare Street uh, renovations or sidewalk fixes or um, crosswalks that are blinking, I've always been told that there's not, there's no money to complete that. So again, I, I, I'm hesitant to even add things like that because I don't, I don't want to put things on there that are not even feasible. So I really want us to be able to circle back to that and have a real conversation of what's possible um, in the future. So, um, so if this is my wish list, then I would say absolutely add Claire Street to, um, and more specifically right by the library. I'd love to see crosswalks there. Um, and I'd like to see one of those flashing pedestrian lights where we see one um, right by New Brighton Middle School where it says, you know, slow down. I, I don't know the real terminology for that, but um, 
that's what I'd specifically like to see on that side of Claire's and then on the opposite side where the mall is crossing towards um, Trader Joe's there's no crosswalks there either so um, that's that if I were to divide so we have fiscal public service and public improvement for the fiscal I just want to be sure that I we um, note that the 1920 uh, youth programs out of our community grants that those are paid by the dedicated children's fund and I know I'm, we decided that at the last meeting but I just want to make sure I highlight that that all youth programming is paid out of the dedicated children's fund um, and that the general fund dollars that are opened up possibly go towards the remodel of our community center so I believe that's about a $28,000 general fund leftover that we would have um, so I would, I'd love to see our community center get a facelift. Um, so that's that fiscal piece of it. Public service uh, to, I, I would agree with the previous list to complete that park and rec strategic plan. I know that the Art and Cultural Committee noted this, but to really f have them focus on the 41st Avenue corridor, um, especially as we wait for the mall renovation, as there's a lot going on, it might not look so pretty we could uh, focus on that. This one. Um, could I just, this one, I'm sorry. Yeah. Was it? Parks and Rec, Arts and Cultural Committee focusing, I know it's in their goals, but uh, to focus on the 41st Avenue corridor. And then the suggestions previously noted, so like completing the wharf, completing the mall, uh, looking at the applica applicants for the two, whatever you want to call that previous list. I was, yeah, the ID projects, I would agree. Thank you. That's all. All right. Um, I would also uh, suggest the completion of the 1819 CIP projects. I think that's a given. Um, Claire Street, I also think is, is important. I know that we, um, had some some concerns about applying for grants for it uh, in this fiscal year but I think it's something that we need to keep on our radar moving forward because the condition of that street is just so poor um, and and really street uh, improvement in general I know that we're continuing a uh, slurry seal project throughout the city correct and I, I just want to make sure that that stays on our radar as well um, let's see what else oh the wharf um, I'm interested in, in pursuing any potential grants that may be available for uh, the remodel of the wharf and any kind of additional bells and whistles that we may be able to, to throw in there as we remodel if we can find grant funding for it. Um, and having worked in the village for a while now, I get a lot of comments about our um, parking technology infrastructure, I suppose I would call it for back, lack of a better phrase. Um, and so I don't know if that's a matter of needing to budget for it or just consider addressing it at some point or consider discussing it at some point, um, but it's something that, that I would like to add to the, to the list. That's Sam? all for me. Okay. Sam? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I begin with my particular um, capital um, oh, projects Jamie. list, you have some, some I just I just want to make sure that as council members when they're finished that they see what I put up on the on the oh, okay. board to make sure I got it right I'm so now yeah. Yeah. Okay. may I ask a follow-up question on um, the two things that I recommended staff to bring forward earlier today would you consider those to be listed as a priorities or is that something that um I, I think on the the tobacco item, I think we should bring it forward to hearing. We'll do that in the next, you know, several meetings here this spring, and we'll see if it develops into a larger project or if okay. it's. I mean, uh, I, I don't know that, that adopting as yeah exactly adopting an ordinance necessarily falls into a sort of a overall strategic. And plan. then the second part to that, would you consider that a priority to comps? Uh, I don't think comps. Okay, thank you. Okay, Sam. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess I wanted to start with the public service principles, and I guess I just had a question about the second bulleted item. 
So it's recognized the high priority the community places on public safety. That's all true. I agree with that. But I was wondering, what's the definition of public safety? Are we just talking about law enforcement? Uh, or is there a broader concept of what public safety may entail? My recollection is these words were chosen relatively deliberately when the first time they were introduced because it was rather than it was just saying the police department, it was intended to mean public safety in general. So it was intended to be focused certainly on the police department, but also focusing on the overall public safety of our community. So I, I, that's my recollection. I don't remember how, how it came about exactly, uh, but it's been a carry forward for many, many years. Right. And I think if, if that is an understanding among the council members that it has a broader interpretation, I'm fine with that. Um, my preference uh, would maybe say um, health and safety, public health and safety. Um, I mean, we just dealt with an item concerning trees to me, which was a public safety issue, okay? Right. And it's, it's not public. Maybe the word public. Yeah, instead of public, the public safety. Public safety has mm -hmm. a connotation for police and fire. Right. And if it was public safety, then yeah, then that's that's a good suggestion, Ed. And I would I would encourage us to maybe, um, uh, you know, use that term to recognize that we're not just looking at the concept of enforcement, right. but in other ways as the well. Because it yeah, yes, as, okay. As, as a noun. Um, so now with that going on uh, to the list. Um, uh, yeah, the carry for items, I think it is uh, critical to continue to work on those items that we've already started and have budgeted and uh, move along with them. I would also like, I imagine there's some maybe other items on our CIP list that are unfunded um, and that we should, um, since those have, by previous councils, have been added to the CIP list, maybe we should, uh, during the budget time, review those as well, see if there's anything uh, uh, that we need to bring our attention back to. Um, in terms of other particular projects, um, I'm Rispin um, Park now. I'm happy to be able to call it a park. Um, um, just in terms of longevity, I, I think that that is, needs to have uh, one of the highest uh, uh, priorities um, and hopefully moving along in tandem with the library completion uh, and having both of those um, uh, maybe, you know, within a short period of time be completed and available uh, to the community um, would be a wonderful accomplishment. Uh, I agree with uh, the other council members' comments about Claire's. Um, I would also, um, in terms of streets, I would like to make a pitch once again for Fanmar. Um, that has been in terrible shape for decades, uh, and because it is a bigger project, it's been harder to tackle. Um, and um, concerning the, um, the sidewalk on Capitol Avenue, I think, Ed, you make a very good point, um, but I, I, would, I think that there needs to be some attention to that sidewalk from uh, the, the parking lots where the public parks, the visitors come, and then they all walk down that sidewalk to get to the village, to get to the beach, uh, you know, families, mothers in strollers. That sidewalk is not wide enough. You know, on the other side, it had been widened, but many people are on this side of the sidewalk. It's a narrow sidewalk all the way from City Hall here, all the way from the parking lots to uh, the destination at the village. I, I think that that needs to be included as part of what we did um, and Ed, that you were a part of in the side, widening the sidewalk in the village throughout. Um, but um, I just see, I mean, people stepping out into the streets even when they're passing one another. Um, so I, I would like to maybe have that be considered on the list. Uh, and if we can do all those things, um, or at least get some start on them, um, I'd be happy. Thank you. Any other comments? You've heard everyone speak, so um, I'll make a few comments. Um, I like the principles. I think that um, they're well crafted, so I'd like to give support to that. And I'm with Yvette to call out the things that um, we have designated in the past and, and make sure they're complete and maybe revisit them so we're up to date on what the situation is. And I have a few that I'd like to add. 
Um, I did bring up earlier about the skate park mural, and I've mentioned this multiple times. We have a beautiful mural out there, but it's largely obscured, uh, depending on where you are, by the um, porta parties. And I think that uh, we should invest in moving the porta potties to a different location in the parking area that is um, easily accomplished and uh, makes the murals completely visible to the public and perhaps add some uh, park benches there so people can use that area to congregate. Um, um, I did bring up the idea of starting the process to create a McCormick, McCormick Triangle Park. I'd like to mention that over the last couple of years, the neighbors in that area have participated in multiple cleanup uh, projects to pull out the ivy and uh, uh, my sub um, um, thanks to Steve and his department to pulling out all the refuge that we've um, accumulated. And we've continued to do that. And now with uh, Steve's help, we also have a park bench there. And uh, we'd like to uh, move forward with the idea of a park there. Um, I do support the idea of uh, working on Claire Street. Um, I call it Claire's Light because I don't think we could do everything that we had originally planned when the RDA was there. Um, I think a great help would be to put um, pedestrian crossings. There aren't any pedestrian crossings right now. Um, I don't know what the appropriate streets would be. I understand we'd probably lose some parking, but I think in terms of slowing down traffic and making it easier for people to go back and forth, there are people that live on the library side and they don't have an appropriate crossing to get to the other side. Um, I received a number of emails about the dangerous uh, pedestrian crossing at Bay and Hill. Um, I'd like to see a uh, flashing light there so that um, people could make the uh, cars know that they're trying to cross. I'd like to note that we do have some senior housing nearby and it's um, particularly uh, arduous for those members of that um, complex to get across the street. Um, I'd like to have the city manager on an annual basis uh, give a state of the city um, talk. I'd like uh, for him to um, carry that out in whatever way that he feels fit but I think the city of Capitola should get um, a, state, a statement about how we're doing in terms of our budget, how we're going ahead <coughs> on our projects, the things that we've promised to the city of Capitola. Um, we've you know, passed a number of funding mechanisms, uh, TOT, sales tax increase, and stuff like that. So I'd like to see the city manager give a statement um, on an annual basis so that the residents of Capitola know where we're at. Um, the thing that I'm particularly uh, interested in is working with the uh, County Economic Depe Development Department to address some of the economic development needs that I feel we have for small businesses in Capitola. As you know, we've had, um, and over the years, we've had multiple vacancies in the village and other parts of the city. and. Um, as opposed to the city of Santa Cruz, we don't have the budget to have an economic development department like they do. We also share this with Scotts Valley and to some extent with um, Watsonville. So I've reached out to all three, um, excuse me, all two of those mayors. And um, also I've brought this up at the mayor's conference uh, a meeting that we have. And I think there could be a lot of benefit in us working together with the county of Santa Cruz and the economic development department that the city, uh, county has. I've also talked to Zach Friend. He hasn't endorsed anything, but he thinks it's possible. So those are my um, particular items. Mr. Mayor, I was just... Yes, can sorry. I, I wanted to ask a clarification on one of the items <coughs> that um, uh, Yvette, that you mentioned. You said you'd like to see all youth programming paid from the new dedicated TOT funding. Mm -hmm. um, I was just did, did, does the meaning of that is that um, 
any youth program now would have to fit into that funding uh, uh, pocket um, and not be and, and none of the community programs funding be available for youth programming I'm not sure I'm so not you're sure. not precluding right that it, that could right. possibly be done okay I, Cause I, mm -hmm. yeah because I just I mean there may may not be enough of TOT funding to do all the things that we want to do and sure. having the ability to maybe look at community programs for uh, other youth funding that we support would be um, I think give us more flexibility but I was just I just wanted to try to get a clarification of what your intention was with mm -hmm. that yeah I, I th the there is a list a current youth programs list that yeah that have been pulled out and that those were the ones I was specifically um, speaking right. about but I'm not sure I know that the dedicated children's fund is very specific in early ed and youth programs and uh, right. um, but however further defined I think that could be up for conversation later okay yeah, thank all you. right thank you yeah. Yeah. so I'd just like to jump in I think Yvette said it uh, fairly well this is going to be up for uh, conversation you know it's been a joint effort started initially by uh, Kristen and Ed and it recognizes that the um, choice of how we s expend our funds on special projects that benefit the community at large is something of contention. So I really appreciate that we're going out about this in a more rigorous and logical fashion. So, um, Ed. I just have a little comment I want to add. Just, just for a general guideline, I know that there's a lot of concerns and we get different um, uh, input from citizens about people in certain neighborhoods want their street repaired and I just put in on my fiscal responsibility hat you know we do get a allocation and I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it here Steve somewhere between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars annually for measure D right okay and I, I just want us to try I mean we, we that is a significant improvement for us we, we were a city that was only allocating maybe a hundred thousand dollars a year for street improvements so it, even though it's definitely not enough to bring up our uh, pavement index program to where we want, it's better than nothing. And I just want us to try to make an effort to use Measure D money for streets and roads and not use general fund money for streets and roads. I, I understand we have a big need for something like a Claire's project, but keep in mind that is like a million and a half dollar project. And, and uh, it may take us a while like we did for Monterey and, and Park to finally get those paved and get there. But I think as, as a general guideline for the council, we should always try to use that. Um, it's going to be about $12 million worth of money over the next few years for streets and roads and, and try to get the other projects done with general fund money, just, just as a guideline. Thank you. So I think we've given you some ideas. And at this point, do people want to vote on them or sort of mull them over and come back next council session? I think um, it's already been told to us this is a guideline and we're not in a, a rush to do it right away. But uh, uh, Jim would like to get a sense of where we're at. So what would the city council members like to do? What was the city manager's hope? Are you trying to get us to vote on one My hope items. would be to have the council sort of having heard everybody's try to come to some consensus on a list. I mean, I think there's more here than can be done in a year. No. <laughs> come on. <laughs> so, you know, if the council could look, go through this and say, look, you know, understanding these and whether we do it tonight or whether we do more research, come back in two weeks, um, but identify six of these eight of these that are the key ones that we need to focus on not to say that none of the other things would happen but you know identifying which ones are the most important ones it sounds like i see a lot of consensus around completing the stuff from the previous years consensus around some option on claire street and we need to obviously develop that further um and i see streets show up in a number of different people's but yes, I think I think seeing the council endorse a list of a subset of this would certainly be helpful. Okay, um, Yvette. Yeah, if I could make make a suggestion, uh, I don't feel comfortable voting people off the the island on things that I don't know where we stand fiscally on. Um, I would I I would love for staff to come back to us to say, you know, this is we can accomplish Claire Street with some sidewalk or crosswalk you know 
with a little bit more guidance on what we have up there or if in fact we've started on some of these things that we may not be aware of or you know there might not be any fiscal uh, things like to move porta potties you know is that I don't want to say no to that but it's a possibility to be done you know, so I just like right. to get some feedback before saying these are my five I don't I, I just don't feel comfortable picking five or six tonight but Kristen has a comment too yeah just actually you know I, I agree with what Councilwoman Brooks is saying and and what I'm seeing here is there's a lot that, that we are agreeing on, as, as you mentioned, that are overarching kind of streets and sidewalks is, is a topic. And then under that we have, okay, Claire Street, Fanmar Street. And then we have, um, you know, things like parks and the Rispin Park. and the. So I'm wondering if it, it would be worth it to come back to this in two weeks. And in the meantime, take a look at this and see what are the, as, as mentioned at the beginning, broader goals and then within those broader goals have these kind of smaller bullet points underneath them um, rather than saying I want to I want to say that Claire Street needs to be one of our priorities why wouldn't we say I want our streets and sidewalks to be our priorities to include Claire Street Fanmar etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, would that be appropriate to keep essentially keep a lot of these but keep them as kind of bullet points under a broader category I, I think that's certainly possible. H how about we try bringing it back in two weeks, have staff do a little bit of organization work underneath the overall principles and kind of slot some of these things in underneath. And associate and then, a price tag with them also. Yeah, and try to identify at least a ballpark price tag. Or in some cases, it may be less of a price tag and more of a staff time mm -hmm. because, you know, there's only so much, you know, we have a relatively focused staff and so there's only so much bandwidth. Um, uh, and so try to bring back a little bit more information and let us take another look at it. Um, frankly, I think around the CIP projects, that is Claire's or a larger Capitola Road uh, Ave project, sidewalk project, or just at Bellaroma, I mean, I think that that's gonna get really hammered out during the budget when we see how much money we have. Yeah. So, you know, maybe we take those projects and kind of put them aside for the time being rather than worrying too much about it and we ID, ID what the projects might look like and then when we get into the budget we actually have a clearer picture of how much money we have and then it becomes time to vote on it and we put our attention in two weeks more on the, the, the sort of staff intensive workload items. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So I think we'll going with weeks. Kristen's idea and you seem to find that as a good suggestion so we'll do that. Okay. Uh, no need to vote. Let's move on to Capitola Branch Library Project. So real quick update on the library construction project. This is part of our reporting that we agreed to as part of the um, change order policy that we would report to the council every hundred thousand dollars that we add to the project or every two months so this is a two-month project because we haven't added anything to the project yet so quick a construction update uh, rain rain and more rain um, basically rain the month of february we lost 29 days um, that's when it actually rained um, those lead to more drain or more delays because you got to dry out the soil um, and you can't just go to work as soon as it stops raining. So that's the big, big thing. Um, I figured out the west best way to beat a drought is to start a twelve million dollar construction project. Um, contractors done an excellent job of protecting the site through the rains. We haven't had any uh, erosion problems. They've done an excellent job of um, securing the site so that when they do get clear weather, they were able to get some work done. Um, they've completed some of the rough grading for the foundations and potholing around the site for utilities and conflicts. Um, in the coming month, we hope to uh, start pouring the foundation. Actually, I think the first pour is scheduled for next week uh, and construct the water main extension that goes through the property and install uh, on-site drainage, which actually helped them I realize we're probably through most of the winter now, but we'll help them address uh, drainage on the project. And they also have quite a bit of underground utility work to do, such as running gas lines and electrical lines onto, this, onto the site. 
Uh, cost update, um, the present construction value of the contract is $11,588,000. Um, this value is about $55,000 short of the value engineering goal that the council gave us. Um, but we do have a $77,000 value engineering change order in the process. So um, it looks like we'll be able to beat our goals. Um, as I said earlier, there's been no additive change orders issued to date. On the expense side, we've uh, paid the contractor $492,595, um, which is 4.3% 4 4 of the project. Um, it's due to the range, the schedule has been pushed back at this point, approximately one month. We anticipate construct completion a year from now in March of 2020. And the current contingency balance, kind of a good thing to keep track of is $650,000. Where did that start at, Steve? Contingency balance? It's been all over. I think we originally started around 800, um, and then it's gone down to much lower than that, and right now we're at 650. I anticipate it actually going up at the next meeting because we're actually going to, uh, the budget for the furniture, fixtures, and equipment's coming in under, under what we have budgeted for there, and that will add probably um, close to $100,000 in addition to that contingency. Thank you. And Steve, will the VE? the next uh, change order add to the contingency, or are you already taking that into account? I've already, we've taken that into okay. account, yep. So just to complete the report, um, budget for the project is 15, a little over $15 million. Um, it comes to various funds, the details are in the, in the agenda packet, but we've received $6.6 .6 million. Um, and of that, we have a total expense on the project to date of $1.8 million. So that includes all the design costs and special studies we had to do and, part and, and related expenses just to getting to the construction part. So we have a $4.8 million cash balance right now. And the city um, finance director has invested that in various funds. And those details are, again, in the agenda report. So I just thought I'd run you through a couple of pictures. This the last time we were here was January 10th. That was what the project looked like, covered in plastic, trying to avoid the rain. That's what it looks like today. Um, you can see we have quite a bit of uh, form work for the foundation pour. We anticipate this left side to be poured um, next week. This is under the uh, children's room. We're actually doing some test pours here. Um, we're the architects wants to try some colored concrete for the main wall that will go along Wharf Road. So we're going to do those test pours and see how those turn out. And then, let's see. So at this point, there's no action required. Um, I'm happy to answer questions, but I did want to see if we could make this work. This is we're paying for this camera. <laughs> this is a time-lapse camera kind of showing. So this is approximately January 10th when we were there. And through the days, every time you see plastic covering it, and that's it. Uh, more rain, more rain, more rain, lots of rain. So <laughs> this is what we've done in the last two months. The baseball <laughs> game with the rain delays. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That's what we've done in the last two months is play with plastic. So anyway, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions? Sam. Actually, I don't have a question. Thank you, Steve, for that uh, report and uh, showing us the progress of the project. I, I guess I wanted to make a plug for the capital. You know, there's a, a capital campaign project that's gone public now, and part of that is to uh, have community member or anyone buy uh, pavers uh, that will be placed at the library. Uh, we're going to be um, having 310 12 by 12 pavers. They'll cost $325 each. With that, you get um, uh, three lines of text, 16 characters per line, um, and your uh, family's name or your name will be uh, forever indelibly um, um, placed at uh, the new library. So I just wanted to announce that to everyone. If you're interested, you can go online and just do a search on Capitol Branch Library Capital Campaign Paver, um, or uh, you can contact uh, Tony at, uh, at Camp Tony, C-A-M-P-T-O-N-I at Cruzio.com. Thank you very much.
So Steve, I had a question. Um, can you speak to where the committee landed on the universal design concept? I know we had some uh, representatives who attended the committee meeting to talk about ensuring that the library was gonna purchase furniture that was more inclusive to those with disabilities. Right, so um, many, many of those items um, we've discussed, we are definitely moving, for, a lot of them are on the furniture end that the library needs to, the library system needs to decide on as they go forward. Um, so they're reviewing the actual furniture items. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the construction project, we are looking at adding the push button entry for the front door. Um, the library has expressed concerns about having panic buttons in the restrooms, mm -hmm. uh, and so they kind of didn't want to go in that direction. Yeah. So those are really the only two items related to construction. The rest for furniture and the library, I know, is looking at that, and we will I'll come back to you with more information. Fantastic. Thank you. I, I just have one question. Um, I was trying to understand the columns on your spreadsheet. What is the uh, designation escrow? Escrow the spirit, escrow the date. What is that actually talking about? <coughs> I'm trying to find that. Uh, page oh, 25. on the payment yeah. schedule. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you give me a number so I can? Well, um, it seems like it's you know, just moves along according to where we're at at this point. Oh, but so escrow. I understand. I'm sorry. So. When we make payments on a public project, um, they give us a bill for work they've completed to date. We retain 5% of that until the project is complete. Got it. To ensure that there's no outstanding bills that need to be paid. On large projects, or actually you can do it on any project, but it's usually on large projects, the contractor can set up an escrow account so that he can earn interest on that money. He's actually earned the money already, but he doesn't get paid. So it's put into an escrow account. and so. Every payment payment we make, 5% goes into an escrow account that can't get released until the city approves it. Got it. Thank you. Okay. With that report, I think no more questions. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.